What's up everybody D-Man back, welcome to a brand new video and today we're going to be doing another Godzilla X Kong The New Empire News Roundup. In this video we'll be continuing our chronological journey through the development of the MonsterVerse by talking about events that happened in June and July of 2023. To begin, we've got Jason Daria's amazing Mothra vs. Rodan animation. This is a King of the Monsters styled animation. It starts out with a very Rodan meets Ghidorah type opening, but instead of Ghidorah, it's Mothra. I love the use of Mothra's wing eyes. That's incredible. And this fight has some amazing choreography. In fact, I think it's a little better choreographed, a little more easy to understand what you're looking at than the actual Mothra vs. Rodan fight we got in King of the Monsters. I just think this one is so cool. Playmates revealed their Titan Tech Rodan. So in addition to their Titan Tech Kong and their Titan Tech Godzilla, they did a Rodan, which I really appreciate because I love to see some Rodan love. I like these really ridiculous toys, so I was glad they did this. They also released a tutorial showing how to transform the Titan Tech Rodan. Again, it just I don't think goes really far enough with the premise. Like, there's not as many upgrades as there are on the Godzilla and the Kong, for instance, but I do just really appreciate that they even did this in the first place, and I like that they picked Rodan of all of the kaiju they had access to. That's cool. Some of the Haya toys started to pop up at conventions where you could see them on display, including this wonderful 2014 Muto. This is the female Muto, and she, gosh, she just looks so amazing. At a different display, they had the large King Ghidorah 2019. That just looks so awesome. They had the Skull Devil, which is looking great. There's the Muto again, and then they had Kong 2017 with the tree. I really like that one. Haya's exquisite Kong 2021, the articulated Kong, hit Amazon for $51. We then got some new promo photos for Haya's exquisite Godzilla 2019. It just looks wonderful. I think they did a great job on it. The red lighting looks fantastic on it, but you can just see so many of the wonderful details like the brown in the chest. I just think they really killed it with this figure. I believe this was the original release before they revamped the neck. Speaking of that revamped neck, we have updated promo images of the Haya 2021 Godzilla and he just looks great. SH Monstrad's 2021 Godzilla was re-released for $68. Seems that they maybe overproduced their Godzilla and Kong from GVK, so they've done lots of re-releases over the past few years. SH Monstrad's also revealed their new Godzilla 2019 night version, just a different repaint on that 2019 sculpt. Viral Studios was originally going to tease their Godzilla 2014 in a bigger way, but instead they gave us this image because they weren't able to tease it the way they wanted. But Spiral Studios is working on a Godzilla 2014, and it just looks great from this picture alone. The Legends of the Monsterverse comic compilation was revealed. It includes all five Monsterverse comics and includes a new Godzilla story. I don't know if that's the same one from the Monsterverse Omnibus or what's going on there, but I really like the cover art. We also got the full Monsterverse Omnibus artwork revealed from Zid. This is awesome. The reason it's so low quality is because it was actually part of a larger reveal post, teasing that the Legendary Comics crew was going to SDCC 2023. Toho Kingdom attended that panel and released this first promo image of their behemoth panels. These are from one of the upcoming comic books. I don't think this is Godzilla Dominion. I, I don't know if it's Godzilla X Kong the Hunted. It very well could be Dominion because Behemoth and Amalok did fight in that comic. I just don't remember these panels very well. The Toho Kingdom also shared out a photo of the entire panel crew and everybody just looks like they're having a good time. I like to see some love being given to the legendary comics crew. Godzilla X Kong The Hunted is the upcoming prequel comic for Godzilla X Kong The New Empire, and it was actually teased all the way back then by KDM. I believe it was because they announced it during this comic panel. KDM also teased the return of Tiamat, Scylla, Behemoth, Doug, Abaddon in either Godzilla X Kong The Hunted or The New Empire, or just rather soon. Some of the things we do know made their way into the movie, some of the things we do know made their way into the comic books, so that's pretty cool. Speaking of comic news, Godzilla and Kong had big crossovers happening here. The Justice League vs. Godzilla vs. Kong 7-issue comic series was revealed with some wonderful artwork to show it off. This comic starts out as a routine clash between the Justice League and the Legion of Doom, and it takes a dangerous turn when the wall between worlds is breached with Godzilla, Kong, and the Monsterverse emerging on the DC's Earth. What ensues will be a brawl of unprecedented scale and destruction. The epic crossover begins when Clark Kent, enjoying a night off with Lois Lane, is interrupted 
interrupted when the entire city shudders under the weight of the monstrous Godzilla who emerges from the bay. It's such a fun premise as well. I like the way that Legendary and Warner Bros. is putting the IP of the MonsterVerse to use, actually doing things outside of the MonsterVerse with these characters and with these iterations of these characters. It's a fun non-canon crossover comic book, and it's just really exciting that they did it in the first place. I love that stuff. We got this wonderful image here revealing Godzilla blasting a hole straight through Metropolis, his footprint obviously crushing Superman with Superman's cape down there in it. This comic did release. It was very popular. I haven't read it yet. There's a lot of cool things I've seen in it. We got some variant covers for issue one, such as this one, featuring the Batman versus Godzilla while the Justice League gives support. We also got this one, which is a pretty classic comic book art piece right here. I love the Batman in particular. The Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong also had a trailer, which basically just hypes up the fight between Superman and Godzilla, which is cool. They did do a big Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong press release as well. And in that, it states one of the great things about Godzilla is that Godzilla is obviously not a villain, but not quite a hero either. Godzilla is about restoring balance and the order of nature. So when Godzilla ends up in this world with metahumans and superheroes and supervillains, things are upset. So that's what's going to make Godzilla want to do what Godzilla does, which is create order. There will be more monsters, I'm not allowed to say which, but Kong and Godzilla are not the only two giant monsters the Justice League is going to have to face. Things are gonna get crazy. This comes to us from Entertainment Weekly. Of course, we do know a bunch of the monsters like Scylla and all those guys did pop up in this. We also know from the trailer that the Skullcrawler's there, and then we have some images from the first issue that have been released, again, hyping up that fight between Godzilla and Superman. This is a mini series. I'm pretty sure it's all wrapped up now, but it's been pointed out that this means Godzilla has now taken on the Avengers and the Justice League in two separate comic book timelines, which is pretty awesome. Michael Doherty joked about his idea for a Godzilla the Musical featuring these photos, which are AI generated, showing off what that could potentially look like. The best ones here are, in fact, the Mothra twins. They just look like they're from one of the movies. I know that a lot of people really freaked out over the idea of this being AI generated, and I think this is truly a harmless use of AI. I don't think there's anything to get really upset about. Ben Wheatley, the director for The Meg 2, says that he wants to do a Godzilla film of his own, and that in many ways, Meg 2 is his version of a kaiju film paying tribute to those movies that he loves already. The MonsterVerse will not end with Godzilla X Kung the New Empire. While there is the potential for a Skull Island Season 2, we do pretty much know at this point Monarch's getting a Season 2, and it has been teased that we will get a third movie from Adam Wingard. There are also things happening in the real world, such as the MonsterVerse attractions which are in the works. There is a Godzilla vs. Kong escape room coming to Los Angeles. Legendary theme parks are headed to France with MonsterVerse attractions, which we have discussed a little bit before, and there are projects heading to Las Vegas and South Korea as well. We don't entirely know when these are going to materialize or what they'll look like, but I did want to mention that they are trying to expand the IP for the MonsterVerse into the real world and make it a much bigger deal. A lot of MonsterVerse licensing deals were renewed. Mattel's Mega, Playmates, Jade Toys, Funko, In Spirit Design Costumes, Bandai, Prime One Studios, Bear Walker, Display, Snapco, and a bunch more have all renewed the license to the MonsterVerse so that they can continue to release figures and apparel and all sorts of merchandise for these movies, as we do know that the merchandise is one of the biggest ways the MonsterVerse makes its money in the first place. There's a bit of a Playmates update on what their new Godzilla Kong line is going to look like. They renewed the MonsterVerse line with an emphasis on Godzilla X Kong the New Empire toys, originally at the time slated to release March 15th. They are no longer in development with the classic line, with Baragon being the last classic figure they plan to release, because the MonsterVerse line sold way better than the classic line, so that's what they want to put their emphasis on. The MonsterVerse hit Licensing Expo 2023. Godzilla, Kong, the MonsterVerse, and Pacific Rim all appeared together. There was a pretty large presence for all of these IPs. I really like the Godzilla Kong banners that they got here. That's really awesome. I love how massive it is. And this is where we learned about who was renewing their licenses with the MonsterVerse and not, and who wanted to keep working with them. Warner Bros. came to Cine Europe and showed some BTS footage from Godzilla X Kong The New Empire. Although that was never released to the public, so we have no idea what it was. Legendary was planning to expand their reach with the MonsterVerse into the real world again. So they stated the Godzilla vs. Kong product sold very well 18 months post the movie in 2022, and so they were planning to expand to four quadrant marketing. They want no shortage of new content to fuel fans, including TV shows, animated projects, and movies. They don't want to wind the MonsterVerse down anytime soon. Dune and the MonsterVerse are the two biggest IPs that they want to expand, and so I don't think the MonsterVerse is going anywhere. Even if Godzilla X Kong doesn't really perform to the levels that some of us would like at the box office, I don't think the MonsterVerse is going to go anywhere. I think they will continue the shows and probably continue the movies as well. I think the only question is, what direction will the movies head? Max Bornstein, the writer for all of the MonsterVerse movies, did a little interview for Godzilla vs. Kong, and it actually has a bunch of juicy information in it that I can't believe no one's really ever talked about before. He says that the challenge was figuring out who would win and who else they would fight. That was really the struggle, was who were they going to go up against. But a lot of that was solved before he even got to write the script. He was basically passed down mandates on the fact that Mechagodzilla was going to 
going to be in the movie, and that Godzilla would win the fight. He found that the hardest part was coming up with a logical way for the plot to happen and to get the two monsters to fight, which I don't really understand. They're big monsters. They just fight. It seems pretty simple to me. Legendary and Toho had already worked out who was going to be in the movie, and so his job was to try and figure out what they were going to do with each of these monsters and what was the best way forward with them. The hardest part was basically getting two heroes to fight in a way that shows that both can be victorious in their own ways, given the right circumstances. He also says that originally, King of the Monsters had way less monsters. The 17 and counting were not an original part of that movie, and instead, Mechagodzilla was heavily involved in the film, but that lots of things were changed after the first draft, which was the draft he turned in, and then when he got the draft back, it was basically the movie we saw. He says he wants to honor the legacy of the characters, but modernize their origins and update them, and it was a lot harder for Godzilla than it was for Kong, mostly because Jordan Vogt Roberts was pretty much the one who drove the entirety of Kong Skull Island from the story to the change in the mythos to the way that the film went, and basically, as I understand it, Legendary just kind of stepped in and made sure that there was a big monster fight at the end and some universe setups for Godzilla vs. Kong. Bornstein didn't want to bring aliens into the universe and doesn't want to anytime soon, but he can understand why classic fans would want that. He just doesn't think aliens fit within the monsterverse very well. However, he was going to have subtle references to the fact that Ghidorah's origins was that he was originally the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs, and that his alien nature was so long ago that he's basically now become just a part of the Earth. And there is some of that that made its way into the film. He also said that Kong Skull Island was the original birth of the Hollow Earth, but that that idea has evolved and changed over time so drastically, and it's mostly because of Godzilla vs. Kong. The rules for what the Hollow Earth was originally going to be got thrown out the window when Adam Wingard stepped in. He changed everything about the Hollow Earth dramatically and made it what it is in the films today. The purpose of the Hollow Earth in Godzilla vs. Kong was actually originally going to be a much smaller scaled human journey that was a lot more emotional for Nathan Lynn. Adam Wingard basically removed all of the original motives for going to the Hollow Earth, instead making the energy source the driving factor, which even Max Bornstein admits really didn't matter. Something that the audience isn't supposed to really care about, they're not supposed to think about it. It's just the MacGuffin to get the plot moving, and instead, Adam Wingard wanted to put the focus on how Kong felt about what was happening, rather than what was happening itself, which I understand the decision there, because you want Kong to be the main character, and so you want Kong's emotions to come before the human cast. He said the picking cities for the MonsterVerse basically comes down to what cities have we not seen get destroyed before, and it doesn't really go much deeper than that. He didn't really want to pick a fave between Godzilla and Kong, but basically he feels Kong's more lovable, even though Godzilla is the one who clearly is stronger and more powerful. And then he says that he has general ideas for the future, but it's not really up to him. Ultimately, it's Legendary who drives where the stories are going to head and go, and it's just his job to kind of pull that off. Kaylee Hoddle of Godzilla vs. Kong and Godzilla x Kong The New Empire was revealed to be headed to Anime Matsuri 2023. Legendary then backed out of SDCC amidst the strikes, holding back their first Godzilla x Kong The New Empire footage for, of course, what eventually became that first trailer. Jared Krzyzewski, the concept artist responsible for designing all of our new monsters, showed his support for the filmmakers following the cancellation, saying that while he was excited, he stands by the decision to hold this off, and stands by the decision of the filmmakers to be on strike. KDM confirmed that the name of the new titan in Godzilla X Kong the New Empire is Shimo, as the rumor surfaced that it was Shimu. This happened on June 25th. Weta, Scanline, and DNEG are the main VFX studios for Godzilla X Kong the New Empire. Godzilla and Kong crew artwork surfaced. We saw a tease of this in the last news and updates, but basically this was the actual crew artwork, and I do think that this was leaked, so we'll talk about it a little more in official capacity when we get to the actual reveal of it. KDM teased that there will be more Godzilla post the new Empire, whether that be from Toho or the MonsterVerse, he didn't state. KDM also estimated that Godzilla X Kong the new Empire's budget is somewhere between 170 to 200 million dollars, potentially coming in at the most expensive film of the MonsterVerse. And those are all our updates for this one, guys. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. If you want to check out the Patreon, you can use the link in the description below where you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community, and more. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man out.